I am Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to my classic car, one with a certified car nut. Well, this week we're in the very northwestern corner of Illinois in scenic Joe Davies County, where I was born and raised, to visit Joe Spagnoli and check out a couple of his ultra rare Oldsmobile Indy pace cars. Now, as the 70s waned, body sizes were still getting bigger, but performance was going the other direction big time. That wasn't the case for these babies, though, because they were custom built by the factory to be particularly beefy for their role as pace cars. But what I think is really cool about these cars are the other custom factory mods that were done on them so these very units could be used for the parade lap of the winner of the Indy 500. Joe, how you doing, man? I'm great. Beautiful day uh, down on the farm here. Yeah, another great day in Galena. Another great day. Boy, it is pretty out here. I do love it. It's, it's coming home for me. <laughs> well, you got some wild cars here. Um, but this, this 77 Olds Pace car is, w when I saw a picture of this, you and I were talking, you have all these great cars and stuff. But this was arguably one of the funkiest cars you have. I mean, this was not really a great time for American automobiles, late 70s, early 80s. It was sort of a dark time, both style and performance. Absolutely. But they, they built kind of an interesting car here. <laughs> well, they got the distinction of uh, getting, to ha uh, getting to build the actual pace car for 1977. So the removable roof is quite unique to the car. Yeah, well, it, you know, kind of all around this thing is, it's, it's just, it's a really different looking car. And, and, and this is the one that, took the parade lap, right? Absolutely. We can prove that this is pace car number one because pace car number two is owned by the Indy Museum. And there are only two. two. <laughs> well, that would sort of narrow it down, wouldn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, like you say, I mean, the funkiest thing about this car, and, and again, this this body, this they'd grown pretty big by then. And this was, you know, when you talk about your father's Oldsmobile, this is kind of what you were talking about in yeah. body style and everything. Absolutely. But they really did something here in, in changing that whole look and feel with, with what they did in the roof. What, what all happened here? You take off that removable roof, it includes the back quarter sections of the windows, and it really obviously changes the whole look of the car. It makes it really pretty neat. Removable rear window, somebody could sit up on the deck back there, rest their arms up on the spoiler to take their victory lap. It's actually a pretty great looking design with the yeah, roof off. with the roof off, it is pretty good. <laughs> I really kind of like it. And with even with this one, with the roof on, because it had that glass roof, you know, it made it kind of cool. And you could buy, in 77, you could buy a replica pace car. Absolutely. But it didn't have any, I mean, it was solid roof, solid hard top. Back to only two. Back to only two. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty funky, very 70s velour interior here too, Joe. <laughs> Combination of deluxe cloth slash velour. <laughs> And, and was that unique to the pace car, or did the replicas have this too? No, they had it, but the bucket seats and this console from a 73, 74 Oldsmobile is unique to the car. And a 200 mile an hour uh, speedometer? I don't think it'll go quite that <laughs> fast, but they only made two of those as well. <laughs> made everything in pairs. Well, you know, these, these were so, the lines on these by 77 were just so square. I mean, these things are like big rectangles. They were, but I think they did a great job with the two-tone color combination and following those body lines to make the car look nice. Yeah, they really did. I mean, this thing now, and these, like I say, this was not the most attractive car GM ever built, but, but dressed up this way, this is a pretty, pretty slick looking machine. Yeah, I think so. I think, they did. I think they actually got it right. They had a lot of time to work on this particular car, probably a, started on it about a year before the race. Now, pace cars and the, the real pace cars don't have VINs, is that right? Yeah, they weren't uh, supposed to get into the hands of the general public, but uh, I was lucky enough to kn uh, know the family of an Oldsmobile dealership that owned this car, and that was how I obtained it, was through their family. And it actually dropped out of sight, right? I mean, you as an old guy didn't even know where this car was. Nobody had seen the car in over 20 years. Man. Uh, in 77, we uh, also had some, you know, really detuned little V8 in there. What do we have under the hood? Well, this one's pretty unique. It's uh, got... Uh, Hand-built 403 from the factory with a lot of custom modifications to be able to get it to get up to those high speeds to handle the track at Indy. Wow, a lot of chrome too. Yeah, this was all built especially for the car. You know, notice the valve covers with uh, the dual chrome breathers on each side yeah. too, help the motor breathe a lot better. 
It has an aluminum intake manifold that was exclusive to the W31 in 1970. So they did whatever they can to bring some of the old technology and performance into the 1977 year. So how does she, I mean, she runs, right? She runs great, actually. It's not the fastest thing off the line, but when it gets up to speed, it really runs smooth. And it was built for those higher speeds at Indy. Uh, yeah, and it's a kind of a, these were big Luxo cruisers anyway. Uh, beautiful day. Uh, what do you say we take it out and give it a little exercise? If you're ready to take a risk, so am I. <laughs> Let's take a risk. All righty. All right. Welcome back to My Classic Car. So, you, you know, with you, Joe, I mean, you've got a lot of different kind of cars, but you seem to have a lot of Oldsmobile. And why Oldsmobile? What, what was it that, that spoke to you about Olds back in the day? Well, you know, again, I, you know, the first Oldsmobile that I really got into collecting was a 72 Hearst Olds pace car convertible. Yeah. And then when you start looking at the rarity of like the W30 cars and stuff, you know, three, four, five hundred of them built of any given model. And I always thought they were underappreciated and undervalued, you know, because they do drive nicer than the other A-body cars. I would rather drive in a 442 than a Chevrolet. Hmm. You know, just much more comfortable, I think. But this, boy, you can feel it. I mean, this is a big, solid car. Yeah. It's, for cutting the roof off it, I'm really kind of surprised the car doesn't rattle more than it really does. Did they, did they do any underneath bracing? Oh yeah. Well, so after this was used as the pace car, and it, it does have, I guess I'm looking at almost 20,000 miles, right about that. Um, I, I mean, those must have been sort of closet miles or something though, because I never I never saw pictures of this or, or anything. Yeah, like I said, it wasn't ever really supposed to be able to get into the hands of the public. and. Uh, family that owned the Oldsmobile dealership in the Chicagoland area had pretty much had it under wraps. They would keep it in their showroom on display every once in a while and bring the car out, but nobody really knew how rare it really was. But well, she rides like an Oldsmobile. Yeah, it really does. I mean, and it, it handles the, the steering gear box is much tighter than your father's Delta 88. With no lean either. It corners very flat. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, the suspension's all been stiffened up to be able to handle those turns at, you know, I don't think they ever hit the 200 mile an hour <laughs> mark at Indy, but. I'm just not used to looking I'm down sure. and, and seeing 200 <laughs> miles an hour, Joe, I, I don't know. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, that was a pretty cool ride. That 77 is a, I mean, that is a funky looking car and that gets some looks, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely <laughs> it does. But, uh, you know, this is another pretty unique car here, the 74. Uh, you know, when this thing was all capped up with the top on, it was, you know, a pretty good looking car. But man, you pull this off, the tops off of this, and this is just, there's nothing like this out there. Definitely the wow factor once you remove yeah. the roof off it. Now, where'd you find this baby? Um, I was able to find this car uh, coming up for sale at auction. It was owned by an Oldsmobile dealer out of Massillon, Ohio, who was lucky enough to get it from Oldsmobile. And the car came up at uh, an auction down in Florida about oh, five, six years back, and I was lucky enough to be able to purchase the car there. Wow. Was she in this kind of shape? Exactly the way you see it, except about 30 years of dirt on it. Oh, wow. We just had to clean it up really well, pulled the interior out and just cleaned everything really well. But it's got the original carpet. Cars only got 14,000 original miles. So it's, uh, it cleaned up really well, I think. Now, I like the louvered hood. That gives it a great look. Are those functional? Or are they... It's not functional, but it definitely throws a little bit of, you know, late 60s, early 70s muscle into the whole look of the car. Yeah. Now, now the replica, Pace cars for 74 wouldn't have had this funky, you know, pop top roof. No, they were hard tops completely. Did they have the louvered hood? Yes, they, they did. They still had that. They did. Well, you know, this was an interesting body style. You know, by, by 77, they'd gotten pretty rectangular, pretty, pretty boxy. But, but in this era, the 72, 3, 4, they were really playing with a lot of lines in these cars. And the way they would marry a character line from the rear quarter into the door, from the front quarter, you know, up into the door and have it all match. I mean, that's a complex stamping. That's got to be a pretty tough uh, design for their engineers, but they did a great job doing yeah. it. Yeah. Now, and again, this would have been, you know, hacked this way uh, in, in the factory. 
Yeah, when we actually took the back seat out to clean the car, we found some old saw blades, and I'm sure those were the ones that were used to cut the roof off the car. But but they did a pretty, pretty good neat. job, you know. Actually, I mean, in, in fitting this and had to had to make all of this custom. Right? Yeah, the, yeah. There's only probably two of these as two well. Two of these as well. <laughs> and this is this is uh, one of the two, and you feel this is pace car one. Well, we can we can definitely prove that Johnny Rutherford took his victory lap and it one car sported Firestone tires, the mm -hmm. other one uh, sported Goodyear tires. This was the Firestone car. There's still remnants of the Firestone decal on the front fender on the passenger side, passenger side so as you're driving around the track people could see the name. Right, right. And then these uh, seat belt clips that are on the tops of the headrests right here. here. The other mm -hmm. car did not have those but we can prove from a lot of the photos um, that the Indian Museum has that this is in fact the actual car that uh, Johnny Rutherford took his victory lap in and we assume it to be the actual pace car as well only because why would they have switched cars just for the victory lap? Right, right. Well this, you, you know, kind of Targa, you know, roll bar, is this a real deal or is it really just the roof? Everybody says that, you know, it was built to design as a functional roll bar. I don't think we're going to try and roll this one either, <laughs> though. Yeah, I, I don't think I want. <laughs> but wild uh, vinyl here, it's almost a patent leather look, real slick, shiny. Very easy to keep it clean, that's for sure. And it seems to be held up very well, you know, over the age of time. The car's got 14,000 original miles on it. And, uh, you know, the whole interior's held up pretty well. Any other trick stuff in here that was specific to the, the, the pace car or the? Well, definitely, you know, the Hearst dual gates. You know, mm -hmm. the being a Hearst Oldsmobile, it had to have had a to dual have gate. You know, so that's the iconic name that Hearst as a non-OEM was able to bring back to the pace car for 74, as well as they did in 72, being the first non-OEM pace car that ever paced the Indianapolis. Right, right. Uh, Wow. 500. Well, I see a W30 badging there, and that, that was my first indicator that it might just bury that speedometer. It'll bury the speedometer, and the one thing that's nice about it, that W30, as you know, stands for the 455, yeah. and it's pretty unique to this car. You might... Let's have a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Wow, once again, lots of chrome. A lot of chrome. Again, this motor was built especially for this car. You'll see it has an aluminum intake. That's from a 1970 W30 as well. They were trying to get the performance up there so this car could actually pace uh, the 500. Well, this one runs too, right? Yeah. Yeah, just in the same situation, no VIN, and we're kind of running kind of funny plates, but it's the back roads of Northern Illinois. That's okay, they won't mind. Let's go. Let's what do you go say? for a ride. All right. Welcome back to My Classic Car. I'm surprised how quiet she is. But this one, I mean, it's it's got the power when you get on it. Ooh, I like the feel of this. Because it still, still absolutely floats along. So smooth, but you can feel the power of it under that hood. Back to the reason why I like Oldsmobile. <laughs> <laughs> the best of both worlds. <laughs> Council does look a lot like the one in the 77. It is, it's identical. It's either from a 73 or 74. They just, instead of cutting this plate open, they just left the cover blank and screwed it in these three places. Oh, yeah. Well, now do you take these, do these get out much? Do they get out to shows? I actually you... drove this one down to Indianapolis. You drove it to Indianapolis? Yeah, two weeks ago for the Hearst Holes Nationals down there. Well, oh, that had to be a hit. Oh yeah. You know, I honestly, in my in my uh, life, I haven't driven that many Oldsmobiles, but I need to drive more of them. This is a dream. Well, this baby floats. We got a whole garage full if you want to take any more of them out. <laughs> Anytime, your you, you invitation's have, always open. You do have a few of them. Oh, man, what a day in Galena, Illinois, and what a blast putting a couple rare Oldsmobile pace cars through their paces. But you know, Joe's got more rare muscle cars than you can shake a stick at, and I'm always looking for an excuse to come back up here. So if he'll let me, we'll do this again. What do you say, Joe? Anytime, you name it. Yowza. <laughs>